So, Francois, <laughs> this is you, my friend. And, the picture uh, dates back. Yes. The picture dates back about 15 years ago. Exactly, and uh, I put a thought. I put a thought next to you, you know, just in case, saying how you lean on the barrel. <laughs> All right, the floor is yours. Okay, Go thank you. Um, so, I would just introduce myself and the, and the estate as well. Uh, so, probably I already met some of you, and but some of some of you didn't meet me any, uh, ever. Um, so, I'm Francois Lequin. I'm uh, uh, the owner, winemaker, cellar master. How can I say export manager of uh, Domaine René Le Quincolin? Just because uh, it's uh, um, as most of the the Burgundy estates, it's a, a small uh, estate, which means 11 hectares, mostly here in Saint-Denis and, and chassaigne mont um, <clears throat> So uh, doing pretty much everything uh, in in the, in this uh, in this estate. Um, so as I said, 11 hectares. Mostly uh, Saint-Denis and chassaigne mont about half and half, half white, half red. Of course, uh, only white in Chassaigne and uh, mostly red in Saint-Denis. I also have the chance to, to produce uh, a little bit of Corton Charlemagne. And actually, the picture that you see now is um, uh, a picture that I took uh, uh, in Corton Charlemagne in 2015, uh, just before the harvest. Um, so I said that I had the chance also to grow some Corton Charlemagne and some Bata Moraché. So it's quite a wide range, um, uh, but with most of the, the, the cuvées uh, uh, that are quite small, um, to give you ideas, uh, I produce some Chassaigne Moraché, Les Charia, for example, it's only four barrels a year. Uh, when we're talking about the Corton Charlemagne, it's only four barrels a year as well. Uh, uh, some of them uh, are a bit bigger, like the Santene uh, it's a bit, it's a bit more than this. It's more like uh, 20, 25 barrels a year. Uh, but um, anyway, this is quite a, a small estate and quite usual estate for, for Burgundy. Um, I, so we're going to talk, started... talk about Santene a lot today, because obviously I have to say that uh, you and I, we uh, have known each other for quite a while. And yes, you make very, very good oh, yeah, the one or two. And, and everything but else. What, but, what uh, but, but basically, I think that for, for me, what has always uh, astounded me is the quality of uh, the Santini appellation, which is by many not considered to be as sexy as Chassain Moache, but the quality of the wines you make there are really astonishing. So please go ahead. Yeah, so, so Santonais is the, the southest village of the Côte de Beaune. Uh, so next door to chassaigne mont uh, As I said, I, I, I grow there both white and red. Um, uh, and of course, there's no comparison, especially. So we start with the white because this is the wine that we're going to taste first. But there, there's with the Santonais Léat or whatever, I have two other cuvées or so of Santonais. There's no comparison and there's no competition with the, the chassaigne Moraché cuvées, for sure. But uh, I think we have definitely a, a, a card to play with the, this appellation in the way that uh, it really shows well. We have great terroirs here in Santonais. Um, some of them are very comparative to, to the ones that we can have in the, 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 the villages next door, uh, such as Chassaigne or Puigny Moraché. Um, so producing some well-balanced, uh, uh, full-bodied uh, and very elegant uh, Chardonnays. Um, for the reds, something is mostly known for the reds. Uh, uh, nowadays, uh, Santenay, the Santenay appellation, I'm not talking about my estate, but Santenay is still like 80% uh, red and 20% and, uh, white. Um, so Santenay is definitely more known for the reds than for the whites. We also have this chance in Santenay to have so many different terroirs um, going from the going from the, the east side of Santenay, uh, so close to chassaigne mont making some very gentle and very elegant uh, uh, pinots, and to the other side of Santenay, uh, the west side of Santenay, uh, that produces some much more structured wine. So, with all these uh, uh, um, varieties of, of um, uh, terroirs, we can. Uh, have different kind of Santonais. Uh, Santonais used to 
to be known to, to make some quite structured, sometimes a bit um, um, tannic wines. I think it's not the case anymore. And especially for me, this is not what I'm looking for to do. Um, I, I really want to, uh, to have wines that uh, are approachable, uh, easy to drink. This doesn't mean that uh, um, there is a lack of structure of, uh, or of depth, but definitely some wines that can be drank earlier because I know, we know that most of the consumers will drink the wines uh, early. Um, I don't know, uh, Akosh, if you're ready to for the tasting, or do you? Yeah, well, I've there, been drinking. Is there, is there any been, other question? I've, I've been drinking it for a while now, so yes, definitely, we're ready for the tasting. Yeah, no question. No, you're for me, I think, it's time to drink. I, I think what um, what I I mean, 2019. If you could say a few words about the vintage itself, yeah. Um, you know, and and explain this because the wine is really super accessible now. I mean, it, I hope it traveled well for everyone. Uh, but it's really, really good now to drink already. And it's incredibly young because you bottled it only a few months ago. Yeah, uh, this, this has been bottled actually uh, uh, last December. So let's say four four five months ago. Um, uh, concerning 19 vintage, uh, it was a quite interesting vintage because it, it was quite a late vintage, late uh, in the way that we started picking around the 20th of September, which is late compared uh, 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 compared to uh, what we uh, what we've known in 18 and especially in 20, um, so which also made a, a slow ripeness. So the interest with the 19 vintage for both white and red, but mostly for the, the white, is that uh, we have a, a very nice structure, nice depth, but at the meantime a very nice minerality, a very nice acidity that brings the balance that we have in this wine. As Akosh said, um, we, we can feel that this wine is already showing well, but at the meantime, uh, we can feel that the, the, this acidity that is at the end of the, the, the taste uh, will allow it to uh, age very well. Um, so that this is an interesting vintage in the way that uh, both it shows well now and it's very approachable and drinkable now, but for those of you who would like to store some bottles for uh, a few years, that's really no problem. I'm sure that the wine is going to taste very well in the, in the coming years. I have a, there's a question on chat room saying, why does the west of Santonet produce more structured wines? Just because of the terroir. Um, this is more uh, chalky soil on the east side uh, of Santonet. So uh, the, the pinots that are produced on the uh, chalky soil uh, always are always uh, finer and, and uh, um, uh, uh, more elegant. On the contrary, uh, the west side of Santonet is more clayey soils, and the clayey soils usually uh, produce some more structured wines. And so it's so just a matter of uh, terroir. When we what we call the terroir, uh, actually, what well, the terroir is mostly due to the soil, but it's also it's, it's basically the combination of uh, the soil structure. The exposure to the sun, sometimes some microclimates that, uh, that can happen, uh, that can be at, at some places, uh, but mostly the structure of the soil. And this is the reason why we have different style of wine uh, from the east side of Santonet and the west side of Santonet. And this is very, very much uh, um, obvious in Santonet, also because um, uh, Santonet is quite a big uh, area. It's more than 350 hectares total. So you can imagine that from the, the far east to the far west of Santonet, it's more like uh, two and a half, three kilometers. So it, you imagine that out of these three kilometers, the towers will change very much. Uh, I think there's also an important thing that you need to uh, mention is that you vinify your Bata Moiraché the same way that you do your Santonet. Or the mm -hmm. contrary. Or the contrary, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So if you can just tell me, because, you know, I, I put your cellar, but I also put your uh, stainless steel uh, thing. So if you can explain a little bit of how you make the wine, because you make them all the same, I know. But if you could just tell, that would be great. So we, we start by the beginning. Uh, to me, the, the wine, you make the wine, I would say, like 80% in the vineyard. Uh, because then it's just a recipe. Uh, each winemaker has his own recipe. I have mine. Uh, but the most important is what you bring from the vineyard. If you bring ripened, healthy, um, uh, balanced grapes, 
uh, it's easy to make a good wine. You know, there's a lot of comparison between uh, winemaking and cooking. You can have the best chef in the world. If you give him some bad eggs, he will never make a good omelette. It's exactly the same with the, with the wine. So to start with, by the beginning, uh, I've always been plowing and working as, uh, as simple as possible, uh, reducing the, the chemicals when I started working 26 years ago, and finally to, to turn to the organic production, certified organic production uh, since 2009. So it's been 12 years since I'm, uh, I'm uh, AB uh, organic uh, certified. Um, this, you've never seen any AB sign on my label. This is normal, just because to me, it's not, uh, um, uh, organic wine doesn't mean, doesn't mean good wine. There are some, some good organic wines, some bad ones, some good regular wines and some bad ones as well. So uh, it's just a, a way of producing that I chose. But this, just to be as close as possible to nature, just try to let the, the vineyards express themselves uh, through the, the grapes that they grow uh, with uh, as less as, um, uh, uh, interaction from my hand as possible. Then uh, when you uh, know that, that the, the, to me, the most important is the, the quality of the grapes that we bring, uh, then it's quite easy um, for the white wines grapes are pressed, uh, the juices are blended. When I say the juices, which means the, the free run juice and the pressed juice uh, uh, from the same block are just blended together in this stainless steel that you can see, uh, stainless, stainless steel tanks, sorry, that you can see there. Um, they will rest for about uh, half a day, 12 hours, uh, before going straight into the barrels, the barrels that you saw on the previous uh, picture. Um, then everything takes place into the barrels, the alcoholic fermentation, then the malolactic fermentation during winter time or springtime. And actually the, the, the wine will stay into these barrels until the next harvest when I will rack or empty the barrels to refill with the new vintage. So uh, everything takes place into the barrels, no uh, racking during the, the aging. Uh, uh, during this aging, I will do some batonnage, so which means some lees stirring. Uh, um, really depends. It's like, uh, once again, it's like cooking. It depends on how I feel the vintage, uh, um, what the, the quality of the grapes that I brought, the, the balance of the grapes and everything. So it can be every week uh, concerning the, the, the batonnage, every other week, once a month. It really, really depends on uh, how I taste the wine and how, what I want to make with. And you do uh, the aging, uh, barrel aging is what, 12 months, 11 yeah, months? 12 months in Probably. barrels. And then the wines will uh, stay, uh, will go back to stainless steel for three, four months uh, to rest, to, um, uh, how can I say, um, settle down. Uh, the goal is to uh, filter them as less as possible. Basically, I just filter the, the bottom of the tanks where the leaves will stay, uh, but the top of the tanks are, are not filtered. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so th this is a total aging of uh, 15, 16 months. And as I said, I usually bottle the whites in December or January, then the, the year after. So which means after, yes, 15, 16 months uh, of aging total. Okay. Can you just very quickly say what batonnage is? We have a question about that. Yeah, batonnage is the, the lees stirring. So which means that um, um, when we put the juice, the juice is into the barrels. Uh, into these juices, uh, there is the, the liquid part and a little bit of solid part, which is also what gives the flavors and, and the structure of the, of the wine. These lees, these sediments, will uh, uh, drop down at the, the bottom of the, the barrels, naturally. Uh, so the batonnage is just, uh, just moving these lees, putting them uh, again in suspension into the wine uh, uh, to... Uh, it's, it's a bit like, um, how can I say, uh, like a tea bag. Uh, if you just don't move the, your tea bag, you're not going to have the extraction of the, the, the tea. Uh, it's a bit the same with the, the leaves and the, uh, for, the, for the white wines. If you just let the leaves at the bottom of the tank, um, uh, the, the, the leaves won't bring what they have to bring to the, to the wine. If you just put them in suspension to the wine, many times during the, the, the aging, then you can get... Uh, everything that is in the lease to be in, to, to go to the to the to the wine okay 
Thank you. I saw that it's clear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, uh, what is the percentage of new oak you use? Uh, no more than 20%. No more than 20%. Uh, once again, uh, I try to make the wines as simple as possible, uh, uh, which means uh, just I want the wines to be the, the expression of the terroirs where they come from. Uh, new oak is, is, is nice, it's, um, it's like a kind of like a makeup. Uh, but if it's too present, then you can't taste the wine anymore. Let's so go to the red. 15, Let's go to the red because I'm conscious of the time. Yeah. So tell us about the red wine. And, um, uh, so the Santenay Vieille Vigne uh, is the only exception in my cellar, which is a blend. A blend in the way that it's not one single vineyard. Uh, this is the white. So Santenay Vieille Vigne is a blend of three different vineyards uh, from three different areas of Santenay. I told you before that Santenay is quite a wide appellation <laughs> and with completely different terroirs from the east side to the, to the west side. This cuvee of Santenay Vieving is a blend of three different vineyards coming from, one is on the east side, one is down in the, the, the village of Santenay and the other one is on the west side. Um, this brings everything. So pretty much the, 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 the vineyard from the west side will bring the structure and the depth. The one from the east side will bring the finesse and the elegance. And the one that is, is, is in Santenay brings usually the, the fruit and the, 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 the fresh flavors. So that's the interest with this Santenay VAV because it's all vines, like the name says, uh, first. And also it, it can bring all the... the uh, the characters that you can get uh, out of the, the Santenay terroirs. Do you do any whole cluster or you distem uh, everything? Some, some years I would do some, uh, but it really depends on the ripeness of the, the stems. Okay. I could do some, I, I do some sometimes, uh, no more than 10, 15 percent. Okay. All you right. Okay? That's good. Uh, any fining filtration? What do you do with filtration? What kind of filtration? Uh, I, do, I do fining every year uh, because fining is not that bad for the wine. I do some filtration every year for the whites uh, because, as I said, uh, it's difficult to have them completely clear. And some markets, I'm talking about the Asian markets mostly, uh, wouldn't accept any uh, sediment into the bottles. So I have to filter the, the, the whites. I still filter the whites every year. Uh, I don't filter the, the reds every year. Um, I would say 90% of the time I don't filter the reds. Some years they don't settle down by themselves. So I have to filter them lightly just to make them clear. Okay. Uh, and the final one, in France, and uh, there is no legislation about what has to be the minimum age for a vine, for a producer to call his wine VA Vigne. No. What is your standard? Your standard? What? 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 What so is it, this? How not, old are the vines? It's not really a standard uh, for, for me. It's just uh, uh, the three vineyards that I use to to make this uh, Santenay Vieille Vigne uh, cuvee. Uh, the average is over sixty years old because one the one that is on the east side is uh, close to eighty now. Uh, the one that is on the west side is yeah fifty fifty five, and the one that is in the middle of Santenay is about sixty. So the average uh, age is uh, yeah close to sixty years old. So I think we can talk about uh, all vines, uh, yes. when you know that uh, um, the, uh, the, the, the capacity of producing of a vineyard is uh, until 70, 80 years old, you can have some very old uh, vines also for uh, up to uh, 100 years, but then they don't almost don't produce any more grapes. So um, this is the interest also of this, uh, having some very low, vin low yields and uh, also th this concentration that you can get with this uh, old vines. So yeah, let's say 60 years old, uh, around 16 years old for me, but no, there's no, there's no rule uh, around the, the old vine. So anybody can call old vines in the way that uh, uh, they want. There's no, there's no rule about that. Well, thank you very much for that.